Jesus, he is wanting us to understand his mighty power. We sing about it. You know, we sing, Hail King Jesus, but then we walk out the door and, 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 and sometimes we leave King Jesus inside only to try to, to take on the world's problems and issues on our own. The message that I would like to share with you today, you know, we're living in a very demonic time. Demonic possessions is no hoax. It is as real today as it was in biblical times. And without a doubt, I believe we're seeing more demonic powers at work in America than we've seen in a long time. I, become, I believe it's a growing, a growing problem here in the United States. When we were overseas in the Dominican Republic and in travels to Haiti, I know it's very prevalent in the islands. Many of you have been exposed to demon possessions. You've seen it firsthand. You've seen its effect on people's lives. You've seen bizarre things that can only be explained by a demonic presence. We're starting to see that today in the number of mass killings that are going on. I believe that what is going on in our world today is no coincidence. I believe we're growing closer and closer to the time of our Christ return. And in the process, we're going to see more evidence of demonic things happening. It's unfortunate, but unless we turn to God, and we find a stronger faith in him, we're going to be encountering more difficult days ahead. I know that Jesus was constantly seeking to help his disciples to grow in their faith. Yet sometimes they seem to be going backwards instead of forwards. You know the time when when Peter saw Jesus walking on the water and he thought, you know, he could do this. He got off to a good start. But as he got out on the water, all of a sudden he started taking a little pride in himself, perhaps. Or maybe he started to, to look around and take his eyes off Jesus. And all of a sudden, he started going down, and, and Jesus had to reach out and save him. Because he still lacked a lot of faith. Now, we know that one of the things that Jesus encountered in his ministry, frequently, actually, was demon possession. When we look at the scriptures we encounter many experiences where Jesus is dealing with demon possession. Let's go back to Mark's Gospel, chapter 1. If we take a look over there in that passage of Scripture, in Mark 1, 21 through 28, at the very beginning of his ministry, we have this encounter where we're told, as Mark records, they went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this, a new teaching? 
and with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. You can see that demon possession was a problem in Jesus' day, and it was a part of his ministry from day one. We can look over in Matthew's gospel in chapter 9, and we have another kind of experience there. In Matthew 9, 20, uh, 32, Matthew 9, 32, here we find written these words. While they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. And then in Matthew 10, 1, just a few verses later, where Jesus is sending out his disciples, we are, we are told how his disciples were given authority. And it to, we are told here, he called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. So what is mentioned first here? Evil spirits. This was a big problem in Jesus' day. Now, we know there were all kinds of illnesses, and there are many illnesses today. And sometimes we want to pass an illness off as if it's only physical in nature. And most of the time, and many times, perhaps that may be the case. But there are some types of illnesses that are brought on by evil spirits. Now, I don't want to alarm you or scare you, but I do want to alert you to the fact that we are dealing with a spiritual warfare. Evil is very present. Do you know how the church of Satan is growing today? Do you know that the occult and practice of witchcraft have grown at an alarming rate? That now a holiday that we used to have fun celebrating in America as a fun thing for kids to go out and trick or treat has now become a day that is dreaded because there are all kinds of planned killings and sacrifices made, even of children. We're living in a day and time in such a world where Satan has been turned loose and is on a rampage. How else can we explain the craziness of people doing the most bizarre of things and how they are planning and plotting and killing? I'm appalled at what's going on in our world today. I hate to pick up the newspaper anymore. For all it does is reveal more and more the same old, same old kind of stuff going on in our world where Satan is on the loose. Demon possession is real, and we must acknowledge it. We must not have our head in the sand. And we must understand that God wants us to be prepared to deal with it. So I'm going to invite you to turn with me to our text, our primary text passage this morning is found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 17. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 17, Jesus is, is going to heal another demon-possessed boy this time, but under some very unusual circumstances. And that's what I'd like for us to focus on today. But before we read this passage, I would like for us to pray. Father, we thank you, for you're the living God of the universe. You have not called us to fear, but to faith. You have called us, Lord, to grow in that faith, to have a kind of faith that can, can deal with whatever obstacles or problems or difficulties that we may encounter in this world, that we can look at Satan in the face and say, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Help us, Lord, to rise up today, to move to a different level in our faith. 
Help us, Lord, to give more than lip service to the word. Help us to understand and embrace its meaning and purpose. Guide us, Father, by your spirit. Help us to know we're in a world today where demons are real because Satan is real. And we're having to deal with these things that are evil. And we never know when we're going to, to encounter the evil one. So guide us this morning, Father, that we will learn from this passage and that our faith will be bigger than a mustard seed. For I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So here we read in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 17, these words. Verse 14 and following. When they came to the crowd... A man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. Oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. Jesus rebuked the demon. And he came out of the boy. And he was healed from that moment. When the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, Because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will, be, it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Now, here in this passage of Scripture, I think it's very important that we take note of the fact that the challenge of the disciples to deal with demons was a lack, with a lack of faith, would not work. The challenge of the disciples to deal with demons with a lack of faith would not work. It's very clear that they were lacking something meaningful in their ministry and in their hearts and in their life that prevented them from dealing with this particular kind of problem. It was a demon in a boy that apparently had locked onto him to a point that it was going to require much prayer and faith. And here they were lacking. We might wonder where they were because of this lack of faith. They were perhaps, they had gotten involved in the ministry and like, and like Peter, had gotten a little cocky, you know, a little, a little prideful. Perhaps looking a little bit more on themselves and what they were doing rather than trusting God for what he can do. You know, sometimes when we're dealing with issues that we can't deal, that we're not having much success in, and, and we're frustrated with it, perhaps it might mean that we need to take a, a look on the inside and, and examine our faith. Because certainly this was what was lacking in the disciples. And as much as they were wanting to follow Jesus, on the one hand, they still needed to do some growing on the other. And this is to say that all of us need some spiritual growth hormones. <laughs> we need a little stimulant. We need some encouragement in this matter. Because what happens is either we're growing closer to God or we're growing further away from God. We, we, sometimes we reach this point and, and we stagnate. 
But God does not want us to stagnate. He didn't want the disciples to stagnate in their ministry. He wanted them to to go further and deeper in dependency upon God and, and his power. And so the disciples, they needed a dose, a healthy lesson from Jesus on how they needed to learn to depend more on him and his power to deal with this kind of problem of demon possession. You see, Jesus, he is wanting us to understand his mighty power. We sing about it. You know, we sing, Hail King Jesus, but then we walk out the door and, 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 and sometimes we leave King Jesus inside only to try to, to take on the world's problems and issues on our own. And here, what the disciples were doing were perhaps straying away from what was central to their ministry, and that is Jesus and his power. And so Jesus would quickly correct the problem and shaking his head at the same time and, and really a little bit perturbed by the disciples' lack of faith. He heals the boy rather quickly, doesn't he? And so as a result of this, the disciples are seeing how quickly Jesus was able to deal with the issue, and then they go to him privately to find out what was, what was the problem. What was going on that would cause them this, this difficulty and, and cause this barrier whereby they could, could not deal with this demon? And then Jesus would open their, their spiritual eyes. And he would say, because you have so little faith. Jesus was looking for a little more faith from his disciples And I believe he's looking for that in us as well. We're dealing with a lot of evil spirits today. We're dealing with a lot of evil forces, demon possessions, and other kinds of matters that really can't be explained, except for the fact that Satan is behind it. So, we must understand, if we're going to be able to deal with these satanic forces, we don't have to deal with them in fear when we have an understanding and dependency upon the strength of God who has given us his Holy Spirit, his presence living in us, who is greater than he that's in the world. We have the Lord Jesus Christ, his victory on from the cross in his resurrection to assure us that Satan does not have the final word. We must understand. We must understand that God's word is very clear as to the final outcome and what's Satan's ultimate destination. We must realize that Jesus was wanting to underscore the fact that there is no demon out there that he can't deal with. And we must understand that we need to put our trust and faith completely in him. Now, Jesus goes on to speak in a hyperbola. And he speaks and he says this, If you have the faith of a mustard seed, Do you know how tiny a mustard seed is? It is super tiny. It's just a little speck. Yet, if we could have just that much faith, if we could exercise, put our trust in Jesus just that much, that that it could move mountains, So he's speaking symbolically that there is no problem too big that he can't handle. That there is no issue beyond his power to deal with. 
Now, you may be dealing with something in your life that you just think it's an impossible situation. But I've got good news for you today. There is nothing that is impossible for God. And, and this is the assurance that he goes on to say that if you have this kind of, of, of faith, nothing will be impossible for you. In other words, nothing can defeat you. You know, they may kill your body, but they can't kill your soul. So we always have the ultimate victory in Christ. That's why Paul could say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Because his confidence was in Christ to the point that it didn't matter about his life. What was the only important thing was Christ. And, and that is the kind of faith that, that Jesus is looking for. It was what he was looking for in his disciples that day when they couldn't deal with this, this demon-possessed boy. Perhaps a problem we may have in dealing with the issues we're dealing with is perhaps our faith hasn't grown enough. We're not deep enough into our relationship with God. We're not spending enough time with Him in His Word, in prayer. For we know that faith comes by what? By hearing, and hearing by the, the Word of God. So if we're going to grow in our faith, then we need to spend more time in God's word, listening to God, focusing on God and what he is doing, on his power and grace. Go out, take some time, get away from everything, spend it with God. Look at a tree. Observe the birds. Listen to the sounds of nature. See how things are growing. Look into the heavens. Observe the stars. Look at the moon. See how everything is in order. Spend some time with God. Let your faith grow. Because you see, we're in an evil day, an evil time. And if we're going to be prepared to deal with whatever evil comes in our path, we must have the faith of a mustard seed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that your word is so true and so alive. We know, Father, how Jesus had to deal with demons continually throughout his ministry. How he was dealing and having to resist Satan at different levels. With demon possession and impersonal encounters and temptations. But he was always finding strength in your word, quoting scripture in Satan's face resisting him. We know you taught us that if we resist him, he will flee from us. But we would, must resist him with the kind of faith that empowers us to do that. So help us, Lord, to spend more time with you. To not let evil take all our time. Let, let, let us not let the things of this world, Father, Captivate us and rob us of the spiritual energy and power you want to provide us through your word, through prayer. Just spending time with you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you help us in your word to grow. Help us to see what even the faith of a mustard seed can do when it comes to evil. 
Help us, Lord, to not be overtaken by it, but to have victory over it through Christ who strengthens us. For it's in his name I pray. Amen.